on page 435, what a friend we have in Jesus. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry. Everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. God spake these words and said, I am the Lord thy God. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Lord, have mercy upon us. And incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not make to thyself any graven image, nor the likeness of anything that is in the heaven above, or in the earth beneath, or in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down to them, nor worship them. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Remember that thou keep holy the Sabbath day. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Honor thy father and thy mother. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. 
thou shalt do no murder. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not steal. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not covet. Lord, have mercy upon us, and write all these thy laws in our hearts, we beseech thee. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ saith. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. O Almighty Lord and everlasting God, vouchsafe we beseech thee to direct, sanctify, and govern both our hearts and bodies in the ways of thy laws and in the works of thy commandments, that through thy most mighty protection both here and ever we may be preserved in body and soul through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy fear. Let us pray. I thank my God always on your behalf. Lord, we beseech thee, grant thy people grace to be withstand the temptations of the world, the flesh and the devil, and with pure hearts and minds to follow thee, the only God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. if you would read the first reading. A reading from the book of Genesis. And Jacob went out to Bathsheba and went towards Haran, and he lighted up a certain place and tarried there all night, because the sun was set. And he took of the stones of that place and put them for his pillows, and then lay down in that place to sleep. And he dreamed, and behold, a ladder set up on the earth, and the top of it reached to heaven. And behold, the angels of God ascending and descending on it. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham thy father, and the God of Isaiah. The land whereon thou liest, to thee will I give it, and to thy seed. And thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth, and thou shalt spread a word to the west, and to the east, and to the north, and to the south. And in thee and in thy seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. And behold, I am with thee, and will keep thee in all places whither thou goest, and will bring thee against into this land. For I will not leave thee, until I have done that which I have spoken to thee of. And Jacob awakened out of his sleep, and he said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I knew it not. And he was afraid, and said, how dreadful is this place. This is none other but the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the epistle, Ephesians. Brethren, this I say therefore and testify in the Lord, that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk, in the vanity of their mind, having the understanding darkened, being enlightened from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart, who being past feeling have given themselves over unto Leviticus, to work all uncleanness with greediness. But ye have not so learned Christ. If so be that ye have heard him, 
and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, that ye put off concerning the former conversations the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitfulness, deceitful lust, and being re renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness, created in righteousness and true holiness. Wherefore, putting away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath, neither give place to the devil. Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands and thing which is good, that he may have to give to him the, that needeth the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Let us stand. Let my prayer be set forth in thy sight as the incense and the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Alleluia, alleluia. The hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord doth vainly. Alleluia. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Jesus entered a ship and passed over and came unto his own city. And behold, they brought to him a man sick of the palsy, lying on a bed. And Jesus, seeing their faith, said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, be of good cheer, thy sins be forgiven thee. And behold, certain of the scribes, and said within, within themselves, This man blasphemeth. And Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said, Wherefore think ye evil in your hearts? For whether it is easier to say, Thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, Arise and walk, but that ye may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins. Then saith he to the sick of the palsy, Arise, take up thy bed, and go to thine own house. And he arose and departed to his house. But when the multitude saw it, they marveled and glorified God which had given such power unto men. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Praise Jesus Lord. Christ. You may be seated. I'm going to hand this book to someone. The title of my sermon today is, When Your Sins Are Forgiven, Expect a Change. In the name of our loving God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Your sins are forgiven. These are some of the most important words that you will ever hear in your life. And this is one of the most important or biggest miracles that the people ever saw in Jesus' time. <clears throat> we saw that there was a man who was paralyzed from the neck down came to Jesus. Not only did he come to Jesus, but Jesus was teaching in a very large room at this time. And when he was teaching in this room, uh, it was so packed. I wish this building could be this packed sometimes. But it was so packed that even the windows and the doors were blocked and so no one could come in. But Jesus was still teaching and there was these four guys who was carrying another man who was paralyzed. And they were trying to get him to Jesus because they knew that Jesus could heal him. And so instead of trying to fight their way through a crowd who probably wouldn't let them in, they did something almost ridiculous, something that we wouldn't think of today. They climbed a set of stairs and they began to tear open the roof of the house. And they were going to release this man down through the roof in front of Jesus. And so uh, that's the setting of our gospel reading for today. But I want to start with this. Every Sunday the same group of seven people would come to church. They were friendly, they would sit in the very back, and the service, and they would stand up after about 10 or 15 minutes before the scripture lessons were read, and they would leave. They would do this every Sunday. And finally, the priest was wondering, the priest at this church was wondering, why in the world are these people leaving every Sunday after we do um, the, the confession and, and whatnot? 
But so he finally asked one of them, and the leader of the group stood up and said to them, we're actually members of another church. Not an Anglican church, maybe it was some other type of church, but they weren't part of an Anglican church or a Lutheran church or any of the liturgical churches. But they said that we like coming to the beginning of your church service because every Sunday we hear something that we don't hear anywhere else. Every Sunday you say to us, your sins are forgiven. You tell us that Jesus took away our sin at the cross and we don't hear that at our church. So we bring all of the sins that we've committed throughout the week, we confess them to God, and then we hear those words, your sins are forgiven. Then we go to our own church where our friends and family attend. Well, the priest encouraged them to sometime think about staying for the entire service. Sometimes uh, he, he tried to get them to persist to see what else continues in the church. And I'm not sure whatever happened to that group of people, just like the people in the gospel lesson that went to meet Jesus, but we know that they came to hear four words, your sins are forgiven. As Anglicans, we hear those words quite often, don't we? We hear those words every time we have service here in this church. We hear those words, your sins are forgiven you. At the beginning of every mass or prayer service that we have, we hear our sins are forgiven. Every time we receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, we hear that our sins are forgiven. Do you ever get tired of hearing those words? Do you ever get tired of that? Do, you, do, do they ever lose their meaning to you? Do they, ever, do they ever lose their meaning when you hear your sins are forgiven all the time? Sometimes we take that for advantage, don't we? Do you ever come here and just expect your sins to be forgiven? Just think about it. When you come here, what would you rather hear? Would you rather hear, your sins have been forgiven, my child, or would you rather hear, you've just won the lottery? That's a hard question to ask, isn't it? Which one has more value or more meaning to you? Now, just think about it. Keep it in your mind. Which one would you would give you more joy? I would rather hear, my sins are forgiven. Which one would give you more joy? Which one would give you more happiness? Just think about it silently in your head. But today, I want to focus on a moment during Jesus' ministry when he spoke these four words. We will see that these four words are the most important words that any of us will ever hear. Okay, I'm going to set a scene for you. Picture Jesus sitting in a house. He's surrounded by all kinds of people all over, okay? Everywhere he looks, there's people. Some of these people are here because they like him. Some of these people are here because they don't like him and they're trying to find fault with him, okay? The house is packed up with people. Even the doors and windows are blocked up with people because they went to hear Jesus speak. Four men come up to Jesus there and they're carrying this man who was paralyzed. It seems this man is paralyzed from his neck down because he was lying down on a mat. You ever seen people like that that are paralyzed, they can't move? They're laying on a bed, they can't move? Well, it was the same thing here for this guy. He was lying on a mat. And these guys wanted to bring this man to Jesus. But there were too many folks around the doors and windows blocking the way. So they found a stairway to the roof and began to dig a hole down through the straw and the mud. Now, roofs in those days weren't like concrete and sheetrock and metal and all. They had mud and, and straw that held the roof together. And so they began to tear away at the roof. Can you imagine all of the noise and stuff that was going on above them? So they began to dig a hole through the straw and the mud. Can you imagine all that commotion that they were causing? Jesus was trying to teach, but there was a big loud noise, maybe like Calvin out here uh, <laughs> barking, but big loud noise, and, and Jesus was being distracted by these four guys who were tearing a hole literally in the roof to get this guy down. And so the straw is falling down on everyone, including Jesus, and no one is listening to Jesus because they were all wondering what in the world is going on. Then suddenly... The ceiling opens up. There's a big hole in the ceiling. The ceiling opens up, and the guys lower the man down into the middle of the room where Jesus is teaching. You would expect Jesus to be mad. At least I would probably be a little upset if someone was tearing the roof off while I was speaking, but Jesus wasn't upset here. In fact, we read in the scriptures that he was pleased. All right, Jesus was happy that this happened. Jesus saw not the disruption that was going on in, in, the, in the tearing off the roof, but he saw the faith 
of the people who was tearing the roof apart, okay? He saw the faith that they knew that they had somehow to get to Jesus. For you see, these people knew that Jesus could and would heal this man. I don't know about you, but it would take a lot of faith for me to go to somebody else's house and tear the roof off of their house just to get to somebody. Wouldn't that take a lot of faith for me to believe that that person's going to be healed, but I've got to tear off their roof before I can get them down there? It seems silly almost, doesn't it? But you see, everyone is watching to see what will happen next. And then Jesus says something very unexpected to this man. And we don't think of us being unexpected here because we hear it every Sunday. We hear your sins are forgiven. But in this time, it was very unexpected. And Jesus says to him, uh, he doesn't say what everyone thinks he's going to say. He doesn't say, you're healed. You know, maybe he thought he was going to a Benny Hinn rally where they would go, heal, you know. And, and But he, Jesus didn't say that to him. Jesus said four words. He says, your sins are forgiven. Now, why in the world would Jesus say, your sins are forgiven to a man who's paralyzed. You know, why would he say that? The literal translation of Jesus' words actually reads, your sins have been sent away. That's what the literal translation of the Bible says. Your sins have been sent away. Perhaps there was something going on in the heart of this man. We don't know. We can't read people's hearts, can we? So perhaps there was something going on in the inside that only Jesus knew about. Maybe he was feeling a lot of guilt. Maybe he was feeling a lot of pressure. After all, everyone at this time ta was taught that if you were sick or suffering or paralyzed or suffering from some disease, that it's probably the result of sin in your own life or the sin in the, in the uh, lives of your parents. Could you imagine living in a world where if you were sick or had cancer or, or something like that, that you believe that it was because you sinned or because your parents had sinned? Well, that's what was going on here. So people probably saw that he was cursed with a lot of guilt inside. The man felt guilty because of that. We don't really know what was going on in his heart. And uh, I couldn't really tell you one way or the other. But before anything else, Jesus wanted to know that his sins, not just one of them, not just two of them, but every single one of them had been forgiven him and sent away forever, that he was totally forgiven and loved by God. Before anything else, Jesus wants to know that about us too, doesn't he? He wants to know that our sins are totally forgiven us and that they are moved away from us 100%. When we come to Mass on Sunday, it's our faith that brings us here. See, you all thought it was me that brought you here, but it's your faith. <laughs> it's your faith that brings you to Mass on Sunday. It would be nice if the place here was so packed that you had to tear open the roof. Well, my mom might not like that. Tear open the roof. When all of us come to church, we all come. How many of you guys, when we all come, we all come with different problems? Y'all have problems? I have problems. We all come with different problems in life, don't we? Maybe we come not being paralyzed, but we all have a little bit of something in our life, a reason why we come. Maybe a, a big something in our life. Maybe we have an ache or pain. Maybe we have a disease. Maybe we have a fear of getting further and further in debt. Anybody have that fear? Maybe we have a fear of fighting a lot at home. Maybe we have a fear of not trusting others. Maybe it's something else. Trouble in your relationships, unfaithfulness, drug abuse, worry about the future, or even a prayer that we've been praying has not been answered. What is it about our life that isn't perfect? Examine yourselves. What is it on the inside of us that isn't perfect? What is it that we bring to church with us on Sundays? I want you to think about it just in your mind. Maybe sometimes, like the paralyzed man here, we feel guilty. Anybody ever felt guilty? You know what guilt is, don't you? It's regretting the past, blaming yourself, and wishing you could change things that you have said or done. Anybody here ever have guilt? I know I've had guilt. I have lots of guilt sometimes.